our New Testament reading comes from Scripture of Mark chapter 4, 35 through 41. Now, before I add, I will say that the first Scripture that you heard was very dear to me and that that has been with me since the sixth grade. My aunt sat me down and said, you will learn a Bible verse that means something to you. And, and Psalms 27.1 has been with me since then. So we read from our third scripture. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat, were beating into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And waking up, he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, be silent, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, why are you afraid? Have you no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? So ends the reading of our first or our last scripture, and the word, and this is the word of the Lord. So, the Bible scriptures of today are significant of dealing with emotions of fear, worry, and trepidation. Conversely, there are numerous scriptures that reflect feelings of excitement and joy. As you know, we are faced with life's transformations that can cause a variety of moods. Take, for example, preaching for the first time. Can bring some excitement, as I've heard from some, but also can be frightening. We might think that of other times in our lives that can stir up emotions of anxiety. A new job, a path, career, change, and maybe moving to a new resident, having a new baby, or suffering a debilitating illness, or maybe the loss of a friend or a family member. In our lifetime, change is inevitable, which can bring on fearfulness and anxiety. Life is filled with reasons to be fearful or worried, yet throughout the Bible, there are reminders that we need not be afraid because God is close at hand. Thus the statement, have no fear, God is near. During the children's moment, Pastor Yancey led the blessing on the backpacks, which is relevant to those starting a new school year. When we look at the startup of school, it involves a variety of changes for many who will be faced with new classmates, new classrooms, and maybe even a new school building, different teachers and administrators. Doing something new and different may, may invoke emotions of fear in young students and even experienced teachers. To all I say, have no fear. God is near. With our faith and trust in God, we can handle matters of all kinds. Early this summer, we held Vacation Bible School in the basement for our young disciples. And if you may recall, I spoke about the premise of this year's theme for VPS, Trusting God. During that time, we learned from the scriptures of Psalm 56.3, whenever I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. And a continuation of the scripture says that in God I have put my trust, I shall not be afraid. Throughout the course of VBS, we learn from Bible lessons and other activities that God is always with us and God will lead the way. There's a couple words that really resonate with me 
from what we try to convey to the little ones. Those words are trust and faith. Webster would define trust as a firm belief in the reality, in re, re, excuse me, reality, real, reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. At some point in time, maybe you've experienced a test of trust. And this may have been done with work, class, or whatever else. Here's a test. Have you ever had the point where you would have someone stand, stand there, and behind them were two, maybe three individuals? The person standing was told to just fall backwards with the idea that the individuals would catch you. And I see some people saying, uh, no. <laughs> some might say that a falling back to catch you is to avoid someone from hitting the ground or that you have put your trust into them. Some might say that's blind trust, maybe even blind faith of trusting one another. See, in Christian life, we speak of having faith in religion, namely our faith in God. Faith can be described as complete trust or confidence in someone or something. There are those who say they trust others by they show little faith. It has been said, seeing is believing. Often we put our trust in seeing. Even then, there are those that see yet still do not believe. Think about what we just read in our last scripture. See, I grew up, I came up as a career in law enforcement. And it was my mantra that I would trust everyone as long as I check their background. <laughs> so recently, as of back in June the 30th of this year, Pastor Yancey provided a Sunday sermon titled 100%. And in short, I derived from his sermon that we sometimes diverge our practice of our faith. Faith has two parts, believing and acting out what we believe. In a sense, we sometimes portion our faith whereby saying we believe, but we do not act out what we believe. We may believe in God, but we live our faith on a human scale of zero to 100%. As said from his sermon, what I got from that, we may say we're all in 100%, but we may practice at a lower percentage in a different phase of our life. One example, the birth of my first son, I was all in. God, this is great. Man, it's only by the act of God that I have a son such as this. But yet, there are those that experience the other end from a young child that may perish. And people may challenge their faith of saying, God, where are you? Today's gospel reading of Mark 4 illustrates how there are those who believe but do not act out the same. The story tells us that Jesus had been teaching to multitudes as well as to his disciples about the kingdom of God. And after teaching throughout the countryside and performing many miracles all day, you might imagine he was exhausted. Nonetheless, Jesus asked his disciples to take him across the Sea of Galilee in a boat. As the story explains, a mighty storm developed and caused great turbulence with the boat, allowing it to take on a great amount of water. The disciples were very afraid of drowning in the sea. Interesting enough, Jesus was asleep during the storm and was awakened by those on the boat. Jesus calmed the waters, and thereafter he said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you, have you still no faith? And they all filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Let me take you back to that boat. Put yourself in the shoes, sandals of those that were on the boat. The storm comes. Would you have fear? 
Just think about a time where you may have encountered something such as that, where your human emotion was fear. See, I think about a time when my wife and I, we were on a boat at an event in Oklahoma on a lake. We were out on the water. As the story says, a storm came, very fierce, a lot of wind, caused a lot of waves, so much that water came onto the boat. Very fearful. I understand what it would be like to be on a boat, to have water take on, and you're thinking you're going to go down in a lake. Fear is the natural human nature for each one of us. Jesus and his words and actions calls us to have faithfulness. Jesus was a teacher to many as well as to his disciples. His disciples witnessed, seeing as believing, that Jesus performed several miracles. Yet, in their presence of the boat, they were afraid of the storm. Jesus' message was to have no fear when you wholeheartedly practice your faith. Have trust that God will be with you and lead the way regardless of your circumstances. Jesus taught many lessons by a way of a parable. Today I offer you a lesson associated with my life. It starts in the early portions of my career during the early 80s in a land far, far south of here called Wichita, Kansas. At one point, I was assigned a training officer who would show me the ropes, teach me how to become one of the Kansas finest law enforcement officers I could be. He taught me driving, report writing, communication skills, traffic enforcement techniques, and how to pull off a few practical jokes on coworkers. A typical training method was to demonstrate a particular skill or an objective and then allow me to perform the same in a subsequent time or an event. Ultimately, all he needed to do was to ride with me and observe my daily activities and provide performance evaluations. Upon su successful completion of my training phase of several months with him, I no longer had him alongside me in the patrol car. I was by myself patrolling the highways of Kansas. Yeah, I was nervous and anxious at times, particularly for my first few encounters with traffic offenders. But my emotions eventually subsided as I relied on my teachings that were put before me to ease and, and to achieve a successful outcome. Several years later, in the summer of 1985, my life had changed. My training officer unexpectedly drowned while swimming in a lake. I was devastated to lose my friend, a close friend, who I revered as a role model and a teacher. Moreover, that was the first time I had ever experienced losing a close friend. You see, not only did he teach me the skills of being a proficient police officer, but more importantly, he taught me to be a child of God. I was no longer, I would no longer have someone to look to for advice, a kind word, or discussion of life. My good friend is no longer among the living, but his spirit lives with me every day. My experience with my training officer correlates to what Jesus taught us. After his ascension, we were instructed to lean on his teachings. For those teachings, we can have no fear as he is with us always. Jesus can calm the storms of today. Sometimes there are sudden storms in our life. Perhaps an illness, a family problem, or the death of a friend or a loved one. Your problems may not go away, but during these times, Jesus can call the storms of doubt and fear in our life. If we possess faith 
as small as a mustard seed and trust in God wholeheartedly, you will receive peace in your heart even in the middle of the storm. For those starting the new school year, students, teachers, administrators, please know that your concerns for dealing with the unknown were real. But understand God will help you through this matter. And for that, I give you this poem. Life's issues may give you reason to shed tears. A prayer to God who listens with both ears can lessen your concerns and fears. Know for sure our Heavenly Father is always near today, tomorrow, and throughout the year. Jesus teaches us that it doesn't take a great faith for great things to happen. What happened doesn't depend on us, but instead on God. God has the power to do anything, and God is for us so we can trust whatever he does. You may waver in your faith, but God never does so for you. So when in doubt, lean on Jesus' teaching. His life is an example of faithfulness. Remember, have no fear. God is near. Let us pray. Merciful God, in Jesus Christ, we have your promise of peace. Receive those that seek help and assure them that you are near Fill us with your spirit and cast out anxiety and fear. Allow us to rely on the strength you provide through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen.